Hey guys, Fuzzy Knop here. Welcome to part 8 of this uh, video tutorial series. Uh, in the last video tutorial, we went out, found some shell code, and I showed you how to copy and paste. Uh, so it's pretty easy. Um, at the very end of the tutorial, the exploit actually didn't work. Um, that's because I sort of failed at copying and pasting. Um, you'll see here that there's a, a little bit extra that didn't paste in. Um, so my shell code ended here which is actually here at this carriage return so I just need to type the uh, the rest of it. Uh, if you copy and pasted uh, successfully your exploit probably worked in the last video. Um, just want to prove that uh, it does work. C2 V0 0B CD Adel. Okay. So here's what happened. You see all these question marks because it echoed us uh, back this data and it didn't know really what to do with it. Some of these are nops and here's uh, part of our shell code. Uh, you see the string uh, uh, shell bin is actually part of the uh, shell code in there. But um, it tried to print that stuff, it didn't really know what to do with it so we got a bunch of question marks on the screen. But at the end here, we have our shell, which, uh, which means that the program crashed. Well, it didn't really crash, we took control of it. So we took control of EIP, we threw it somewhere in these uh, 400 or 500 uh, nops. It slid all the way down, hit our shell code, read these bytes into the CPU, executed them as they were assembly instructions, and that spawned a shell. So. If, uh, if it was an application that was available across the network, you'd be able to spawn a remote shell. Um, if it's something set up uh, as like a, a war game where the application has a higher privilege than you do, you'd be able to escalate your privilege and have a shell at a higher privilege. So if the application had like root permission, um, but you could run it, but you couldn't create root processes, and the application only did something stupid like display something on the screen, you could exploit it, spawn yourself a shell, and you'd basically now have root on the system. So that's why we went to spawn a shell, and that's why we wanted shell code. Um, so that sort of ends this little run of this tutorial series. Uh, in the next tutorials, we'll go back and we'll look at uh, the format string vulnerability, and I will point you into the direction of another really great uh, tutorial series. So uh, this tutorial series is by the uh, Corlan team, Corellian team. Um, it's it's really good. Um, it's a really really good one. But you need to have that uh, foundations first. So I really recommend that you have watched the videos on uh, pentest.cryptocity.net and have gone through the security tube videos too first. Um, if you go to Corlan.be and you browse through on their site, it's somewhere security it, it was actually kind of hard to find um, and I have a I have bookmark so that's sort of not fair so let's say it's just if we're googling we would google for Corland uh, exploit tutorial there you go wow so if you type in core it's core land spelled like that I know it's not said like that exploit tutorial uh, the very first link is the first in the series. Um, it starts with stack-based overflows, right? So they're part one of this tutorial, and it's just a text-based one. Um, I may make some videos to run through this tutorial, but it takes a, a real vulnerability in a real piece of software. You'll have to go out, find the software, download it. Um, but you'll be, you'll be editing like a playlist file, and when you pull this playlist file in, the, the process crashes. Um, this is all Windows based, it uses some different tools, but it is a very thorough, very, very thorough tutorial, and I really recommend uh, that as some some next steps if you're if you're looking to get into uh, exploit development. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this uh, part of the tutorial uh, series. Um, if you like it and you're expecting more, uh, please subscribe. Thanks.